neighborhoods. I've knocked on a lot of doors here, not in this particular neighborhood, but in the neighboring ones. And I have these memories of 29-year-olds opening these doors, saying, oh, we just moved in. We're having a couple of kids. We have a couple of kids. We got a dog. And this is our home. And that was normal, to have someone who was 28, 29, 30, moving in to nice neighborhoods like this. Uh, that was because Canada had made a, a very simple promise. It, it wasn't anything um, revolutionary. It was just a very simple contract we had with the country. You work hard, you get a great paycheck, buys uh, good food, and a nice home in a safe neighborhood. Very straightforward. And that's why millions of people came from around the world for that bargain. But after nine years of Trudeau, that promise, like everything else, is broken. Housing costs have literally doubled. The average mortgage payment has gone from $1,400 to $3,200. The needed down payment for the average home has gone from $22,000 to $46,000. The average rent on a one-bedroom has gone from a measly $973 to now $20,000. $200, roughly, after nine years of Trudeau. It used to take 39% of the average family's income to make the average payment on the average home every month, back in 2015. Now, it takes 60%. In Toronto today, it takes over 70% of your pre-tax income to make payments on the average home. In Vancouver, it's 98% of pre-tax income, meaning if you're in Vancouver today with the average income and you wanted to buy the average home, you'd have to stop paying taxes, stop eating, stop buying clothing, stop driving, stop vacationing, stop all forms of recreation, and it would still take 98% of all the money you had to make that monthly payment. Of course, that is mathematically impossible. No wonder there are six, there are 1,400 homeless encampments now in Ontario after nine years of Trudeau and the NDP Liberals. 25% of Canadians live in poverty. One-fourth of kids go to school hungry every single day, according to the government's own data. Housing costs in Canada have risen 40% faster than incomes, the worst gap of any G7 country. In fact, Vancouver is now the third most expensive, Toronto the 10th in the world when you compare median income to median house prices, and homes in the United States are between 25 and 45% cheaper than they are on the Canadian side of the border, proving this is not a global problem, it is made in Canada. Now, obviously, government gatekeepers are, that block home building are largely to blame for the fact that we have the fewest homes per capita in the G7, even though we have the most land to build on. But there's also the taxes. In Ontario today, one-third of the cost of every new home is direct taxes. That does not include the indirect taxes of For example, income tax on construction workers and businesses or all the paperwork and delays and consultants you have to pay just to get the building permits. I'm talking about direct taxes. So let's get this clear. When you buy a new home today, more of the money you spend goes to bureaucrats than goes to the carpenters, electricians, and plumbers who actually build the house. This is insane. The number one cost for a home is government. Government bureaucrats, government taxes, government gatekeepers. 30%, as I said, is taxes, and 39% of all the taxes in a new home are federal taxes, including the GST. The GST, which adds $50,000 to the cost of a million-dollar home. It's a 5% federal tax, it was supposed to be indexed. You used to have a rebate on the four, first 450 grand of a new home back when the GST was instituted thir- three decades ago. That, was, that threshold was supposed to go up every year, but it didn't. And now, good luck trying to get a house for 450 grand. You can't find anything for that after nine years of Trudeau. 
So everybody basically is paying GST on their new home. The GST was not meant to apply to the basic necessities of food and housing. That's why the exemption existed in the first place. It is also why today I am announcing that a Pierre polyev led common sense conservative government will axe the sales tax on new homes under a million dollars. This will save about $40,000 on a new home of 800 grand. That would mean a savings every year of $2,200 in mortgage payments. Getting rid of the GST on new home builds will stimulate 30,000 additional homes built every single year, which incidentally will actually generate more income tax revenue for the government without raising rates. That will help cover the cost of the tax cut. But we will also cut bureaucracy. We're going to cut the programs that liberals themselves admit haven't built any homes. The accelerator fund. Sean Fraser goes to the, the, the committee and says that the program doesn't build houses. And he's right. Since they gave a half billion dollars to Toronto, home building's down by 20%. And development taxes are up by 40%. Money given to Vancouver has led to less construction and higher taxes. To Winnipeg, they gave Winnipeg money and the Winnipeg City Hall blocked 2,000 homes next to a transit station built for those homes. Construction is down there as well. So while Trudeau and the NDP Liberals build bureaucracy, I want to build homes. Common sense conservatives will get, stop giving the money to bureaucrats, instead leave it in the pockets of home builders and home buyers. This is all part of our common sense plan. To axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. The purpose, as in everything we do, is to restore Canada's promise. To bring home a country where hard work earns a powerful paycheck and pension that buys affordable food and homes in safe neighborhoods like this one. Let's bring it home. Thank you. We'll now take questions from the floor. <coughs> Mr. Paul, I have Michael Couture from CTV News. I wanted to know if you can confirm, uh, first of all, that this your plan that you're proposing today will save $8 billion annually. Uh, also, uh, can you list the programs that you'll be cutting to get to this number? And please, en anglais et en français. So it will save $8 billion over... We're going to cut two programs for sure and more beyond that. One, the Accelerator Fund, has $3 billion left in it. It has been a disastrous program that has led to less home building and more local bureaucracies. Um, $3 billion will be saved from that. And then the Housing Infrastructure Fund that hasn't built any infrastructure or any housing and hasn't even instituted any uh, gr announcements they have it, they're not even accepting applications yet, six months after it was announced. What they're doing with the money is building up a big, fat bureaucracy in Ottawa. That will be gone. So that's a total of $8 billion over several years. Then we expect uh, that we will collect about $2 billion more as a result of the 30,000 additional homes that will be built year after year because of this highly stimulative tax cut. It's going to spark more home building, which means more workers and businesses will be making money building homes. And therefore, at the existing rates, they'll be paying more into the system. So this includes about six, sorry, about $16 billion in additional revenue and lower cost to the taxpayer, which is about the cost of axing the sales tax on home building over the next four years. Thank you.